Okay, this is the video for lesson 3.2. And this is a point slope formula, but it's called writing equations of lines using points or two points. So a little warm up here, just to remind us of what we did in our previous lesson. So if we're writing the equation of a line, we're looking for the slope and we're looking for the y-intercept. So I can clearly see the intercept here is negative five. So I'm gonna make a note of that already. And then as I'm counting up my squares here, I can see I go up one, two, three squares, sorry, this is not very neat. And then across one, two, three, four squares. So as I went up, that's positive three. The right would be four. This is my rise over run. And therefore this would be my equation. Y equals three over four X minus five. And then we can check our answer and that's all looking good. For the second one, I can see that it goes to positive four and I can see the slope goes down one, two. And then it goes across one, two, three, four, five. So the slope for this then is negative two over five. With my fractions, I should be checking actually if they simplify. Um, I can confirm that these ones do not, but something sometimes on Desmos, that's certainly worth checking just to make sure. We said we went through four, that's positive four. And there we go. So just a quick recap, if you missed lesson 3.1, or just to reinforce what we learned in that lesson. So specifically today, this is the point slope formula that you can see here. And it looks a little similar to something we've seen before. We've certainly had um, x1 and x2. And actually, if we were to divide both sides by x minus x1, what we would get is y minus y1 over x minus x1 equals m. And that's actually our formula for slope, except normally it says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But this is literally just a rearrangement of the uh, slope formula. And this is how we can calculate equations of lines algebraically, given a slope and a point. So this is our third type of line we've seen then, because we've seen slope intercept, which we saw again in the warm up, y equals. When x and y are on the same side, that's called standard form. And this is a slightly new one. So write the equation of the line with a slope of five and passing through the point negative one five in point slope form. And then we're going to solve for y and give you a final answer in slope intercept form. So this is a summary of the question. And as I only have one coordinate this time, I've just labeled it x1 and y1. There's that formula we saw on the previous slide. And I've color coded this just to make this a little easier as we're substituting in. So y1 is 5. And it equals the slope, which is 5 as well for this question. Uh, x minus... And there's an extra negative on this question as well, because it's negative one. Now, when we have a case like this, where we have two negatives together, we should actually just combine it to make a positive. And from here, this is just going to be our algebra work. So this is actually in point slope form, but we really want our equation to say y equals. So as always, when I have parentheses, I always want to work on those first. So this means I'm distributing here. So five times x is 5x, 5 times 1 is 5. And I want it to say y equals, not y minus 5 equals. So I need to move this negative 5 to the side, which I do by doing the opposite. So instead of subtracting 5, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And then it will cancel on the left. And then on the right-hand side, 5 plus 5 is 10. Now, part of this equation that shouldn't really surprise us is this part here. As we know, the equation says it has a slope of five. I know this is going to be 5x. So all I'm really trying to do here is just find out what this missing value is. And this formula here is how I actually go about and do it. Now, I can check this answer. We think it's 10. Let's have a look. There you go. And you can see that it does pass through this point. And we know it has a slope of five. So I've entered 5x here. Now, just to link this in with what we did in a previous uh, unit for our lesson on transformations, I've typed in 5x here because I know that this is the correct slope, and now I'm just trying to find out what the y-intercept is. Notice where the line goes here, and notice where the point that's supposed to go through. Now, if I was to count this up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I can see I actually want this line 10 places higher. How do I do that? Adding 10. So it's the same answer as before, but just a slightly different way of actually getting there. But just a reminder of what we did in unit two as well. Now, for our second question, same sort of thing. Here's the point, here's the slope. I've already labeled my coordinate and I've already written down my formula. So I'm going to go ahead and start substituting in. 
y1, it says is negative seven. So I need my two negatives here. And my slope is negative one third. And x minus nine. Now I noticed like the first example, I have an example here with a double negative. So the two negatives together, I'm just gonna make into a plus. And then I'm gonna follow the same steps I followed before. As soon as I see the parentheses, I know I want to distribute here. So negative one third times x is negative one third x. And negative one third times my negative nine, please check on Desmos if you're not sure, it's positive three. And then to make it say y equals, I just have that last bit of rearranging to do. So instead of adding seven, I'm gonna subtract seven from both sides. And then three take away seven. Once again, if you're not sure, just go ahead and check on Desmos. You'll find it's negative four. So I'm gonna put subtract four here. So I can check my answer here. We think it's subtract four, so let me check. And you can indeed see that it goes through this point here. And we know it has a slope of negative one third because I got negative one third x here. And also like that last question as well, notice that this is where the line is and I need to get it down here. So notice I would like the line to go down one, two, three. I'd like it to go down four squares. How do we do that? We put negative four at the end of the equation. And once again, obviously that's the same answer we just had a second ago, but a slightly different way of thinking about it. Okay, as we move on to slide three, same sort of idea here. We're gonna do our substitution. So y1 is four. Our slope, not particularly a nice number, this one, five over two, x minus negative six. And I can see I've got a double negative again, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that straight away into a positive. Parentheses, always doing that first because of PEMDAS or GEMDAS. Five over two times x is five over two x. And five over two times six, you should certainly check that one on Desmos. That's going to be 15. And to make it say y equals, I need to move this negative 4 to the other side, which I do by doing the opposite, which is to add 4. And then I can go ahead and just work out what this is. So 15 add 4 is 19. So my equation, therefore, is 5 over 2x plus 19. Once again, notice that the number in front of the X is five over two, not surprisingly, because it says we have a slope of five over two. Sometimes that's an easy way to get rid of multiple choice answers if you're checking this. Now I'm gonna type this one in. And actually, I can't actually see that it is 19 for this one just because this is so high up. So if I zoom out, I can click on the axis and you can see straight away that it is 19. So just remember how to use your little tools on the side here if you need to zoom in or zoom out wherever appropriate. So that's the basics for the point slope formula. But there are some alternative ways that you can do this as well. We can actually take a very graphical approach to this, which helps review what we did in the previous unit as well. So if it says a graph with a line with slope two passing through three, three, then we can just plot this point. And then I can think about what a slope of two looks like. It goes up two, and then it goes right one. Now, in terms of writing my equation here, I know that as it has a slope of two, that it equals y equals two x. And all I'm really trying to find now is what's this y-intercept here? Now, if I keep going this way, obviously I'm moving away from the intercept, but I could actually do this backwards as well. I could go down two and left one, down two and left one, down two and left one, down two and left one. Or possibly I could have even just drawn a line straight through this right at the beginning and find out that it also goes through. Uh, I'm going to be easy to draw a negative three line using this tool, but there we go. So that seems to be a lot quicker. And for certain questions, it certainly is. The problem becomes when it's a question where perhaps the intercept is not a whole number. So it's important we do this one and we make sure that we know how to do this algebraically as well. Or another instance would be, what if this point was a really long way from zero? What if this point was like 73, 83? And that would be really difficult to try and plot on a graph. So algebra methods are good for all questions, but for easier questions, certainly this is a useful method to know as well. Uh, slope of negative two thirds. So that means I go down two and across three. And once again, I'm moving away from the axis. So I'm going to go backwards for this one. So I'm going to go up two and left three, up two and left three. And then as I put my line in, you can see that the intercept is negative one. So my equation would be y equals negative two thirds x 
minus one. So once again, much quicker than trying to do this by algebra. Uh, negative three quarters goes to negative eight, nine. So negative three quarters means I go down three and across four. Now I'm moving towards the axis this time. So I'm not doing opposites. I'm just going to keep going down three across four. And there you go. You can see my intercept is three. And that's how I'm going to write my equation then. Y equals negative three quarters X. I'm going to keep the same slope. And I want the Y intercept to be three. So I'm going to put plus three. Now, our last skill is finding an equation given two points. So when we do the point slope formula, that's just a single point um, and a slope. Obviously, there's the two pieces of information. Uh, this time, they haven't told us a slope, but actually they've given us two points. So when they do that, we can use the formula that we used um, right at the start of the unit two. We can find out what the slope is. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And then once we have the slope, we can use that point slope formula. So for this question here, um, and normally I would want to write these out first. Let me just move my little picture out of the way here. There we go. So one, four, and two, three. So as I label these, this would be x1, y1, just like we did previously. And then this one here would be x2, y2. And I apologize, that's not very neat. All right, so y2. And if you want to put the little loops in, this is what we did on the first unit as well, just to make it a little clearer what each of these things are, we can do that as well. So y2 in the top left corner is 3. y1 is 4. Uh, x2 is 2. And x1 is 1. And if I type all that into Desmos to work out what I get, I get negative one. Now, once I found out the slope, I can use either of these two points and I can use the point slope formula. So the question is, which point should I use? And the answer is it doesn't really matter, but if you wanna make your life as easy as possible, try and make sure, first of all, they're both positive numbers. That's normally easier. And for this one, you can see that they both are already. And if they're both positive, try and pick one with the smaller numbers, one and four and two and three, they're both pretty close. I'm, I'm gonna go with two, three this time. And I'm gonna relabel this one then as X1 and Y1. This is my new X1 and Y1. So the formula, Y minus Y1, this is just from the first part of the lesson, equals M X minus X1. And then I can plug these numbers in. So Y minus three equals negative one, x minus two. And I'm really running out of room here. Um, if you were to distribute this, I would get negative x and then positive two. And if I do the opposite of negative three, which is to add three, two add three is five. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in here, whoops. Actually, it just says, first of all, find out the slope. I guess I was getting a little carried away here. So the slope is negative one. And then as I move on to the next slide, aha, see it's all here. So we, we actually worked out that it was five anyway. So let me just check y equals negative one x plus five. And technically I don't really need the negative one. I can just put negative x. And you can see that both those answers are quite good. Now, if I actually graph these, then this is actually really easy to check the answer. So all I need to do is connect these together, but also make sure I extend it through the y-axis. Oh, look, this goes through five. I already know straight away that my answer that I wrote down here was right. Obviously, I could use the click button to check this one. Here, you can see pictorially that this is correct as well. So graph paper, graphing is a really good method actually for finding answers for super quick questions. So as we're doing this one here, oops, this one didn't come out very nice. Negative six, zero and 12, three. So I'm gonna call that one X1. I'm going to call that one y1, x2, y2. And then I'm going to use that formula that you can see over here. So y2 in the top corner is 3 minus y1, which is 0. Uh, bottom row, x2, that would be 12. Take away. And x1, it's negative. So I got two negatives here. 
you could change it into plus six. I would just recommend typing it straight into Desmos and finding out what it is. And that should be uh, one over six. Fingers crossed that that's good. We'll find out in a second. Uh, whoops, looks like I might have made a little mistake there. Or perhaps it's, oh, perhaps I need to change something. I actually think this is one sixth. I think that this is mistyped here where it says it's one third. So we'll come back and fix that one in a second. So by the time you see this, it will say one sixth. So I got y minus, and I picked 12, three as my coordinate here, just because I don't like negative six. So I relabeled this as x1, y1. So my y1 is three equals one sixth x minus 12. Uh, distribute one sixth times x is just one sixth x. And one sixth times negative 12 is negative two. You could use your calculator, obviously. And instead of subtracting three, I can add three. And that should get us to our answer now. One over six x, negative two plus three is just one. And we'll go and check, see if that one looks good. Notice if I plot the two points and connect them up, you can indeed see that it goes through one. And I can also see here, it does go up one and across six squares. So yes, it is one sixth and not one third as it first said. And this will be one for you to try as well. So you can see what the answer is. Work through the steps. Um, you've got the little checks here after each one. So if it's going wrong, you can always uh, keep going until you get it correct. And this space is here to fill it in. But there is also that opportunity. Once you get to this point, if you look at the points, you can actually see what the answer is fairly quickly. All right, that concludes the video for this one. So try and learn that point slope formula. That's going to be particularly useful when we have to do it algebraically. But also be aware you can do these questions graphically if you have some graph paper. Um, you can't always use the touch screen like we did on here because uh, sometimes it's just a Desmos calculator. This was a sketch pad so you could draw on the background. So you'd probably have to draw them on paper if you were doing this by hand. Um, that does it for this video.